Hello class, so this video will cover the last part of chapter 6 on risk assessment and is meant to be watched before our Tuesday lecture from 1.30 to 2.30 on March 31st. From last lecture, we've gone over most of the objectives for section um, 6.5 and now for this lecture we'll be calculating acceptable concentrations uh, given exposure to carcinogenic and non-carcinogenic chemicals uh, for various and multiple exposure pathways. Before the last part of the last lecture before spring break, we uh, discussed acceptable risk. Uh, so hopefully you remember what an acceptable risk is. That's usually 10 to the minus 6, or between 10 to the minus 4 and 10 to the minus 6. And an unacceptable risk is 10 to the minus 3. So an acceptable risk is one in a million, uh, and one in a thousand is not an acceptable risk. Remember, these are the four components of risk assessment. We've gone through the other three, and now we're on risk characterization, which is different for uh, carcinogens and non-carcinogens. So for carcinogens, uh, this is the acceptable concentration equals acceptable risk times uh, BW times AP over SF times IR times EF times ED. So make sure you write this equation down. There's a lot of studies that show writing uh, helps you commit to memory uh, and remember better than, say, typing or just watching this video. So we'll go through each of these variables. Uh, hopefully you remember them from your glossary, having to look them up. So try to remember what each of these stands for before I go over them. And remember, you can look a lot of these up in 6.14. And this is in your textbook, of course, and in uh, the lecture files in a handout. Uh, so for these variables, AT is average time in days. It's usually 70 years of an average lifespan times 365 days a year is equal to 25,550 days. EF is exposure frequency, so number of days an individual is exposed to chemicals per year. And exposure duration is the number of years an individual is exposed to a chemical. And ingestion rate uh, depends if this uh, chemical is being uh, ingested via water, soil, or air. So this could be liters per day, milligram soil per day, uh, cubic meters per day. And remember, acceptable concentration is uh, a mass over volume, so this can be milligrams per liter. Uh, it also can be, you know, milligrams per cubic meter, and so forth. So this is table 6.14 again. This is where you'll find your ingestion rate uh, in the third column, and you'll find your exposure frequency and exposure duration in the last column. So it's really important to read the problem, whether the exposure is in residential, industrial, or commercial. Uh, that's where you can get these problems wrong, is putting the wrong variables up. And you'll be given these tables on an exam and in the FE manual. Uh, so we didn't go over all of the variables, so we were left with SF and BW. So you can pause this video and remember what those stand for. So BW is body weight. This is usually in kilograms and acceptable uh, concentration. We went over that. And then slope factor was SF, so we went over these before, and you can look them up in the IRIS database, and that's in milligrams, kilogram day. Uh, just a note here, uh, the FE manual has slightly different variables. Uh, most of them are the same, and the equation is set up a little bit differently, so be familiar with both of these equations. Uh, so they do CDI, which is... Uh, chronic daily intake, and that's in milligrams per kilogram per day, so that's the slope factor. Uh, and CW is the chemical concentration in water. Uh, so just know that they're calculating for the slope factor instead of the acceptable concentration. And they have the equations broken down, whether it's ingested in drinking water or soil or air. So now we'll move on to non-carcinogens. Uh, hopefully you can remember what an HQ is. Uh, so HQ is the hazard quotient, so that's the acceptable risk from exposure to a non-carcinogenic chemical. And here's the equation, uh, so please try to write this down. And it's usually unitless, so this is 
hazard quotient, quotient is equal to average daily dose over reference uh, dose. Uh, so do you think the hazard quotient will be equal to greater or less than one? So usually hazard quotients uh, are less than or equal to one. Uh, if they're over one, then that means that it's an unacceptable uh, you know, risk or exposure. And so what if the hazard quotient equals one, what does the average daily dose equal? So look at the equation, how it would equal one. So that is the average daily dose is equal to the reference dose. So hazard quotient is average daily dose over reference dose. So if those are the same, that'd be equal to one. And remember from last lecture what the reference dose is uh, based on the you know, dose response assessment. And so that's a little bit before there's any observable effect or no observable effect. They put a safety factor uh, before that. And you can look these up uh, in the IRIS database. So again, the uh, FE manual has slightly different variables, uh, but same kind of equation. They just have things scanned differently. And so both be familiar with that, uh, especially when you may be taking the FE exam. Uh, so here's a, another equation uh, similar to carcinogens for calculating the acceptable concentration based on uh, hazard quotient, so the acceptable concentration is equal to the hazard quotient times RFD times VW over IR. So many of these variables are the same from the carcinogenic equations. Uh, so try to remember what those are. It'll make you be able to solve the problems a little faster. So IR is ingestion rate. So remember, you can also look that up in the table same table 6.14 in the third column. Uh, RFD is the reference dose, milligrams, kilogram day, and VW is body weight or kilogram. Okay, so those are uh, the equations you'll need for our lecture on Tuesday. And remember, based on your groups last time, we'll be going through three different example, example problems from the book. Uh, and you'll be presenting back to the class how to solve those problems. So try to come prepared. Having done the problems, I'll give you 15, 20 minutes in class to go over them as a group and discuss. Uh, so remember example 6.6, .6, uh, group one that did the male dose uh, is doing this problem. And 6.7, group two who did female will be doing this problem and example 6.8 uh, for children will be doing this problem. And uh, I'll put handouts in the file folder uh, with the solutions of the problem, but try to solve them on your own without looking at the solutions first. So as always, let me know if you have any questions and hopefully this video was useful.